Chantry House not too far away still. Then Montmorel in the yellow approaching three out. Classic Concord landed with the lead but now been swamped. Jay Poir, Gwenny Mayboy coming there. Johnson's blue under pressure. Johnny Hu now serves it up to Gwenny Mayboy. Bold endeavour. Lord Snooty, West Balboa right in behind. Then Jay Poir and Montmorel. They're on the way down towards the final flight of hurdles. And it's Charlie Todd on board. Gwenny Mayboy that leads the way from Johnny Hu racing along in second. West Balboa and Lord Lord Snooty trying to challenge over the last. Gwenny Mayboy landed running. A good three or four lengths in front from Johnny Hu. Then Lord Snooty and West Balboa clear from Montmorel. They're up the running and it's Gwenny Mayboy who is clear by four lengths. A real scrap on for second place, but no doubt about the winner. The opener will go to Gwenny Mayboy. Gwenny Mayboy home in front. Lord Snooty in second, tight for third, maybe just West Balboa. What an impressive win that was. No, uh, very impressive. We jumped so well throughout. We travelled lovely. I mean, they went hard enough early on, and I was probably just a little bit further up than what I necessarily wanted to be, but I was also in no rush at the same time. Um, look, down the back straight, I was able to refill and get a nice breather into them, and then um, he literally just come alive up the home straight. It was almost like a little whipper. I mean, <laughs> he's, um, he's not shy of a bit of toe, so... Can you believe how far you went by? I know, I couldn't quite believe looking back. I mean, it fell apart from the back of three out and I was happy going into two out, but I just felt like I had to kind of half semi-commit going into the last and kind of go. I mean, I don't want to take any prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you give it some willy in the celebrations after, which was great to see. So, so meaningful to have a winner on Grand National Day as you have done twice. Yeah, no, I mean, um, days like this aren't, aren't easy to come by and um, like it means the absolute world to me. And um, I can't, well, I can't say how happy I actually am to win it. It's a reward, isn't it, for yeah. all the hard work of the ground? It is, yeah, and I mean, look, everyone works hard in the race, and the stable staff, the trainers, every jockey in the country, and um, look, it means a lot, and um, hard work does pay off. Bugsy Seagull just about led, but quickly now pressed by brighter days ahead. Staffordshire not near side. Then Esprit de Poitiers, Il Atlantique trying to come up with something now. That was two from the end. Jimmy Desoy is trying to stick on, but they're racing their way down towards the final flight, and brighter days ahead is cruising clear. Brighter days ahead by four lengths now easily from Bugsy Seagull. Staffordshire not, then Jimmy Desoy out over the final flight of hurdles, and it's brighter days ahead. She's well on top here. She's going to lead by four. Five lengths with a furlong to go from Stafford Chenard, a stable mate chasing in second, then Bugsy Seagull and Jimmy Desoy, but it's brighter days ahead, runner up at Cheltenham, goes one better here at Aintree. Brighter days ahead has taken the turn as Mersey novices his hurdle under Jack Kennedy. You were so gutted, weren't you, when this now was beaten at Cheltenham? I was, you know, I, you know and listen, I've always said that how much I think about her, um, you know, she's she, she special, and um, what well, she was good there today. Um, you know, listen to Barry Gary uh, uh, giving a talk before race, and they gave a lot of great points. I think the step of the trip probably really suit her. But uh, look, look, it's just great to win. The horse were ran all week. We we set a good few place horses yesterday, but um, very proud of all the horses and uh, all the all the jockeys, the staff, and owners, and everyone. You know. It's, it's exactly the same as Cheltenham. I mean, you brought your horses here in great form. They're running extremely well, but it's just they're tough races to win, aren't they? Listen, it's hard to win every day. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so you come over here and you hear everyone about Willie this and Willie that. Like, we, we do with Willie every day of the week. He's, you know, he's the greatest trainer of all times, and uh, I'm just probably lucky that I was born in the same year as him. But, uh, you know, he makes me hungrier, and uh, I hope I make him hungry as well. That was the final open ditch, two out, and cruise control kicks for home again. Stan Shepherd, a couple of lengths to the good at least, over forward plan, he's now out of the pack to challenge. Then Kinondo, Cueto and Twig, followed by Cribilli, and Sam Brown's now running on when it's all over, as they come down towards the final fence. It's cruise control from forward plan, then Kinondo, Cueto, Sam Brown and Twig, are the next ones out over the final fence, and it's still cruise control, who's trying to guts it out. Forward plan is challenging. Sam Brown is absolutely thundering home. Cruise control is all out. Sam Brown is getting closer, but cruise control will make all. Cruise control from Sam Brown. Forward plan. Canondo Cueto is back in fourth. And Twig, Kilbeck King, and Crivelli. That was a fine performance. You must be delighted. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's just paid off. It's a plan that's worked out. We always sort of had this race in mind, and we've been slow to step him up to three miles because. Although he's seven, he's still quite raw and he's a big, tall frame of a horse. So 
just sort of tried to give him, and I kept saying to John, everything's going to come a year too soon if we're not careful. So we sort of plotted all, our way, and in all fairness to the horse, he's kept you know, delivering every time we've asked. He's come out of his races very well. Um, so, you know, yeah, it was, it was fab. As Buddy One grabs the lead off Flooring Porter. Buddy One goes on there at the third last. Strong leader is coming to have every chance. Then Hidden Valley Lake. Flooring Porter has faded. Hewick is next as they come towards the second last. Buddy One leading by two to Strong Leader in second. Then Hidden Valley Lake. They're clear of Flooring Porter. Monkfish plugging on. And then Hewick. But Buddy One has got Strong Leader and Hidden Valley Lake both chasing very hard here. Heading to the 13th and final flight. Strong Leader comes to challenge. Strong leader lands level with on the far side Buddy One and it's Strong Leader and Sean Bowen taking over here and forging away from Buddy One and Hidden Valley Lake. Strong leader has the advantage. He's gone clear by about three and it's going to be a breakthrough. Grade one win for Strong Leader. Strong leader comes home to win the JRL Group Liverpool hurdle. Hey, Wally Murphy, how are you feeling? Unbelievable, Tom. These are honestly these days are uh, they're special, aren't they? And uh... I miss Cheltenham with this horse, and so the owners are mad to go. He's, they're, they're, they're local people. It's a great story. That he's a homebred, and yeah, to kind of miss Cheltenham and that they're, they're from Bidford Avon, which is yeah only 30 minutes from Cheltenham's a big call. And uh, he's a good horse. He got a great ride off Sean, and uh, listen, Grade One winner, Magic. He, I tell you what, he didn't have travel. Oh, he did. He jumped and travelled way better than he has done kind of through his career. But uh, listen, Magic, you can't often. Struggle to find words out of me, Tom, but I'm honestly, I've really, really enjoyed that. I've got to walk you over to him. Everyone seems delighted for you. El Dorado Allen led them then, just about in front there for in late night pass. Glenn Gooley still well up there in the red and white. Galia Dilato also nicely handy with those yellow sleeves. Kitties like Wamaj, Manella Indo, then Delta Work in Coco Beach. Farouk Delen has been pulled up before fence number 26. Foxy Jacks is now the last one going, although he's losing touch. They're racing towards the final open ditch. Fence number 27, four out. El Dorado Allen, late night pass. Galia Dilato, Kitties Light, Meteor the Waters made a mistake. We've got one down at the back of the field there. It could well be Glenn Gooley. Glenn Gooley, the early leader, is gone. So Galea Delito, El Dorado Allen. I am Maximus on the heels of the leaders with Coco Beach. Then Delta Work, Kitty's Light, Late Night Pass. Foxy Jacks, Manella Kruner getting well behind. So too Chemical Energy. So approaching the Anchor Bridge Crossing, Galea Delito, Late Night Pass, Kitty's Light. Then Manella Indo. Right behind him with the blue cap is Delta Work. And then El Dorado Allen, I am Maximus and Galvin. Wamage, the Goffers got a every chance. Meaty of the Waters ain't that a shame. Vanillier is now been ridden along Soti Coco Beach and then Nassalam and then Limerick Lace and Janadil. They head the way towards home. Many chances in the National. And it's Gina Andrews on board late night pass with a narrow lead to Galia De La Tau and Harry Skelton. Manella Indo is just in behind with Kitty's Light and Delta work. Galvin has crept into sick. Then Rouamar's just being chased along. I am Maximus is next in the field along with on the outside meeting of the Waters. Late night Night pass just led over the second last. Kitty's light coming to challenge. Manella Indo is held together. Galia De La Tau just losing ground as Delta work and meeting of the waters try and improve as they reach the 30th and final fence. Late night pass pressed by Manella Indo and Kitty's light meeting of the waters on the outside. Delta work is coming there. I am Maximus is also looking to get through. There's a loose horse involved as they run towards the elbow. Manella Indo and Rachel Blackmore to Delta work in second. I am Maximus is in third. Kitty's Light is in fourth. Manella Indo is pressed and passed by Ayan Maximus, who starts to storm clear inside the last half furlong. And Ayan Maximus and Paul Townend streaking away to win the Randox Grand National. Ayan Maximus, the winner. Second was Delta Work. Manella Indo, a fantastic run in third ahead of Galvin and Kitty's Light. Ain't that a shame? Got round under David Maxwell ahead of Meeting of the Waters. Galia De La Tau, Marsh finishing. So too, Limerick Lace. Coco Beach, late night pass, got tired. The Goffer, Vanillier, many, many finishers. Eclat de Rear, Panda Boy, Capodano, Noble Yates, Nassalam, El Dorado Allen, and Adamantly Chosen. And tell me about the horse, because obviously he's a huge talent. You can see that. Yeah. He has his own way of jumping. What's he actually like to train at home? He's just another horse, but he never, he never shows me on the gallop that he's a champion. He's just another horse. He comes up. The gallop, Rachel uh, rides him, and you know he's, he's an easy enough horse to ride. Uh, you know, and he's nearly a stable pet, I think, with Rachel. So um, uh, 
he's unremarkable. If you saw him out in the field, you wouldn't pass any remark. He's, but he's obviously got an engine. And it was the, the Bobby Joe you started talking about grade ones, yeah. about gold cups, and that has underlined it here again with that success. Uh, exactly. You know, when you can win a Bobby Joe like that, you know, that is probably one of the best trials for the national. And, um, you know, he just ran away with it. It was just extraordinary. It's surreal to tell you the truth. Uh, it hasn't really sunk in yet. Uh, trying to watch it over your shoulder here and see, try and relive it. Um, you know, we went down the inside, bit of luck. Sure, we watched the closing stages together and, and you can discuss it. we got a lot of luck. Yeah, I, I felt down over the last two. The loose one was in front and, and it was getting messy, but I thought when I'd get him out and get a bit of air, clean air, that um, that there was a little bit in the tank and, and there definitely was. You know, you hit the line so strong. There's loads in the tank, isn't there? That's a classy national winner. It was, yeah. Um, I'd have to have a word with you, put the saddle on and went back fairly far, right? but we'd forgive him now. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the rest of the race and how that went. Yeah, he, um, he he actually took to them really well early on and got a fright in the middle of it and missed the chair. Um, and he just got a little cautious then, but I had plenty of weight and, and I thought we were going a, a nice gallop that had a nice position. Um, I was getting a nice lead off the grey horse in front of me, he was jumping brilliant and, and, and I had a little bit of room there and he just warmed back into it well. Um, but didn't see a whole lot of the last two and it was, didn't fly them but took them on, you know. As they turn for home and found a 50 and Master Chewy now come to challenge Quilixios as Nickelback fades. Etalon there on the outside, over three out, Quilixios held together, found a 50 still cruising as they run to the last ditch, two out, Master Chewy in between Quilixios and found a 50, Etalon back and forth, three in a line over the second last, Quilixios headed by Master Chewy, but can Master Chewy deal with found a 50? These two on this long run to the final fence, they lock horns, both jockeys still just waiting on the right is master chewy on the left is founder 50 founder 50 just a master chewy they've left quilixios behind then liberty hunter founder 50 is just winning the argument over the last he lands a length clear master chewy is fighting back though and he's got to the lead from founder 50 heading inside the last half furlong founder 50 coming again at master chewy in a pulsating goal and founder 50 has just rested the spoils from master chewy who gave it a tremendous go they were clear of Liberty Hunter, Hercule de Soy and uh, Quilixios. Look, he's, he's a lovely horse. Uh, he's really maturing the whole time. Thanks. Um, really maturing the whole time. And I just, today I got a good thrill out of the way he battled from the back of the last. He, I thought he had the race put to bed and I'm not sure whether he stood on himself or something at the back of the last um, and just lost momentum, but really picked up again, yeah. It was a slightly awkward landing, wasn't yeah. it? Massive chewing managed to fly Yeah, it. yeah, exactly. I, I'm not, not sure what happened now. He jumped it well and everything, but uh, just the way he stuck his head down, he, he really wanted to win, so <clears throat> it was great, yeah. And how did the race come out? Because I looked at it and it looked like there's going to be loads of pace on and I thought this is yeah. going to be ideal for Founder 50, but then it all went wrong at the start. Yeah, very messy at the start. Went down to the force and collided in the air uh, with Charlie Deutsch's horse. Um, but yeah, we probably didn't go as hard as what I thought we were going to go. It was always travelling and then down the back we really, really pressed on. Um, and I was I was kind of happy enough to let them go. Um, I actually probably ended up there a bit too on him, to be honest. Yeah. So uh, no, he, he was very good. It's good to see him putting it all together because he's got a couple of huge performances on the clock as a novice hurdler, and he's really come on as a chaser. Yeah, he hasn't missed a beat all year now. I know he's been beat a couple of times, but lost nothing in defeat. So. Uh, um, yeah, no, he's, he's a great horse, a tough horse, yeah. Here's Tripoli Flyer coming there, running away under Paddy Brennan and looking very confident indeed. Still a fair way to go. Val Grand is making a run on the inside. Uh, they're being followed by No Questions Asked, who was at the back in the early stages and they it's also low running on it. Horace is Pearl down the outside as they head inside their final two furlongs, but Paddy Brennan takes a look under an arm on Tripoli Flyer. Has the advantage here to good and clever. Val Grand, No Questions Asked, Horace is Pearl is chasing Sorcerer, then got a dream and Electric Mason, but Tripoli Flyer has the advantage here, is still being chased by Good and Clever, Horace's Pearl is stable mate, is emerging as a late threat, is Tripoli Flyer and Paddy Brennan chased by Horace's Pearl, and Horace's Pearl is getting up to deny Tripoli Flyer, and Horace's Pearl and Connor Brace have won, leading home a 1-2 for Fergal O'Brien, Tripoli Flyer second. I'm just delighted, delighted to get a winner, and um, it's been a tough 
festival entry and stuff, and that's like a diet with us. Yeah, and uh, well, listen, we were, we were screaming for, for we on a personal level, we Paddy as well, weren't we? were absolutely screaming yeah, for Paddy. Paddy. We thought we, we thought Paddy had a he, he looked very well, yeah. very confident yeah. going the whole way around. I thought Paddy gave it had a beautiful position, yeah, beautiful yeah. right down the inner saving ground. And I love what Paddy does best. He slips in and out. He goes through the wings. He comes into the pressure ground. Comes back in again. I I was absolutely roaring Paddy on. But anyway, congratulations. Thanks, one, two. Much, Connor Brace is a great rider from the Did, did you future. feel there was a bit between them coming into it or not? No, not really. I said someone asked me. I thought on the ground that Horace would handle it better. He's one one of these two bumpers on um, on soft ground. Fair play to Jason McGuire who bought this horse as a two-year-old, so uh, and sold it to, to Matt, uh, Matt and Sally Burford. So they've been great supporters with me. They had point to pointers with me and. Uh, Shelton Lavage was the first horse to had. They've been fantastic, and I say thanks to Jason McGuire as well. And Tripoli didn't half travel into the race. I know he's just been nabbed late on, but he, he, he tanked through the race like a good horse. Yeah, I, I'm going to have a, one, one happy owner, one sad owner. But anyway, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, take it on, we'll take it today. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.